a high-tech Airbus aircraft on a long journey to Hong Kong. 75 passengers and a teenager in the cockpit. What could go wrong? It's definitely quite sad to hear about plane crashes that could have been avoided if someone had taken action on time. But it's beyond depressing to know that the lives of passengers and crew were lost because of pure unprofessionalism. Stay tuned to see how a pilot's son caused a catastrophic airplane crash. On March 23, 1994, Aeroflot Flight 593 departed from Moscow's Sheremetyevo Airport, heading to Hong Kong's Kai Tuk Airport. The aircraft, an Airbus A310-300, carried 12 crew members and 63 passengers, including 40 Russian nationals and 23 foreigners, mostly businessmen from Hong Kong and Taiwan. About four hours after the takeoff, Captain Andrei Viktorovich Danilov, aged 40, left the cockpit for his scheduled break. In his absence, the relief pilot Vladimirovich Kudrinsky, aged 39, and First Officer Igor Vasilevich Piskaryov, aged 33, took control. Kudrinsky was taking his children on their first international flight, and they were brought to the cockpit while he was on duty. Thus, five people were now present on deck. Kudrinsky, First Officer Piskaryov, 16-year-old Eldar, 12-year-old Yana, and Vladimir Marakov, a pilot flying as a passenger on this flight. With the autopilot engaged, Kudrinsky let his daughter sit at the controls, which was strictly against regulations for obvious reasons. He then adjusted the autopilot heading to give her an impression that she was turning the plane left and right, though she actually had no control of the aircraft. Shortly after this, it was Eldar's turn to occupy the pilot's seat. Kudrinsky intended to repeat the same maneuver with his son who wanted to move the control column. He tried the yoke while applying some pressure and held it that way for some time before returning it to its original position. Meanwhile, co-pilot Piskaryov held the yoke from his seat as control had not been transferred to him. The pilot then used the navigation sub-mode to bring the aircraft back on course, and the autopilot tried to level the aircraft at its programmed heading. It came in conflict with the inputs from the yoke, which Eldar was holding in a neutral position. This caused the computer to switch the ailerons to manual control, leaving Eldar partially in control. A silent indicator blinked to signal the partial disengagement, but being accustomed to the audible warnings in Soviet-designed aircrafts, neither pilot noticed this until Eldar notified them that the aircraft was banking to the right. Ironically, if both Eldar and Piskaryov had released their controls at this point, the autopilot would have taken over and restored a straight flight path, avoiding the accident. The pilots became confused as the flight path indicator changed to show a new closed 180-degree path, similar to a holding pattern, instead of the planned route to Hong Kong. Within 9 seconds, the aircraft's bank angle steepened to almost 90 degrees. The Airbus A310 design didn't allow such a steep bank angle, and the aircraft began descending rapidly. Keep watching to witness the series of decisions which made the safe recovery of this aircraft impossible. The increased G-forces on the pilots made it difficult for them to regain their positions, while Piskaryov tried his best to control the buffeting plane. The autopilot, which no longer controlled the ailerons, used its other controls to compensate by increasing pitch and thrust. As a result, the aircraft entered a stall and the autopilot disengaged completely. To recover from the stall, an automatic system lowered the nose and put the plane into nosedive. Despite managing to level the aircraft, the first officer overcorrected while pulling up causing the plane to stall and enter into a spin. By the time both pilots managed to level out the wings once more, it was too late, and the altitude was too low to recover. Subsequently, the aircraft crashed into the Kuznetsk Alatu mountain range in Kemerovo Oblast, leaving no survivors. The news of the crash reached Moscow within 24 hours, and the people angrily demanded answers. The disappearance of the two-year-old plane just beyond the Mongolian border without any emergency signal raised suspicions of an explosion or collision with a foreign object. Although Aeroflot continued to deny that the children were present in the cockpit, the truth came to light when sound recordings were leaked to the public. Investigation later revealed the pilot's limited experience with foreign aircraft as another major factor, as the Airbus A310 was the first Western aircraft introduced to Aeroflot's fleet. The accident emphasized the importance of proper cockpit procedures and stricter safety measures.